Well, welcome. Welcome to those that are online and watching today. It's really a privilege just to share with you today something that's on my heart. Um, and it's not like I was scrambling to come up with a word. Nathan called me Friday and he was sick. His throat was sore and he said, be prepared. And, and he called me yesterday and said, Ted, you're on. So, but this something actually that I've been chewing on for about a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I was prepared. I wasn't expecting to preach, but I was prepared. So if you would, turn in your Bibles to John 15, 15. John 15, 15. Maybe as you're doing it, let's just open in a word of prayer. Father, right now I just want to offer myself to you, Lord, and I just sort of use me to, Father, as a vessel to share your word. And so, Father, may you just speak to our hearts. So we just commit this time to you, Lord, and we say, Lord, have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So John 15, 15 says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called your friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. In that last song before communion, we sang that, you know, that it's his blood that makes us friends. And that's my question for you today, and the title of this message is, are you a friend of God? Or are you a friend of Jesus? They're interchangeable. Are you a friend of God? You know, if you uh, read that whole passage in John 15, and I will because it's so important, because it's all the pre before you get to be a friend of God. John 15, verse 1 says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. For by this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples." As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. And I'm going to stop there. In the Old Testament, there were just a couple of people that were called friends of God. James 2.23, it says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Nice title to have, the friend of God. In Exodus 33, verse 11, it says, So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And he would return from the camp, and his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, he didn't depart from the tabernacle. But Moses got to speak with God as a, as a friend to a friend. That's a pretty important place to be, isn't it? Proverbs twenty seven seventeen says, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And that's what God wants us to do even as, as we are, are fellowshipping and, as, and as, as we grow together and walk this walk with Christ, that he wants us to sharpen one another. We're accountable to one another. You know, I'm glad I got Peter and Nathan in my life. I need to be accountable, right? Um, 
But I think what we've done, though, is we've sort of dumbed down what a friend is. We've done, dumbed it down in Facebook. You know, I can just say, here's my friend request. Be a friend. I've got 128 friends on Facebook. They're not really friends. <laughs> um, what if Jesus had Wi-Fi in Facebook? You ever think what that might look like? Comments would be on there all the time. It was really good wine at that wedding. He, I heard he made it himself. Or he dragged us all the way out into the wilderness. There's no reception. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> right. There he is arguing with those Pharisees again. Doesn't he know that those are our spiritual leaders? Um, he wants me to wash feet. OMG. <laughs> Friendship's a lot more than that. You know, um, here I'm going to name drop. There's some people that I've met in my life, you know, um, and I can't call them friends, but years ago as a student, I was doing a co op term in Ottawa, and I happened to meet Pierre Elliott Trudeau, the prime minister at the time. You can't really say I know him that well. It was a choice little meeting out in front of Parliament. Um, years later, Tim went to French Immersion School in St. Thomas, and so um, they named the school Pierre Elliott Trudeau School, and so his son Justin came down for that. So I got to meet Justin Trudeau. He's not a friend. He's not even a Facebook friend. Um, one day walking through Pearson Airport in Toronto, I met Gordy Howe. Mr. Hockey. You know, he's not a friend either. He's dead now, but he was never a friend. Um, in my profession, I was in computer sales in the really early years of computer business, so I got a chance to meet, this is for you nerds out there, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. So I got to meet them. I met uh, Bill Gates down in, in New York City, um, you know, and any, any Toronto Maple Leaf fans here? <laughs> Years ago, my brother set this up. Um, it was shortly after he retired. I had lunch with Daryl Sittler. So anybody know Daryl Sittler? He was captain of the Leafs for years and years. Well, like four of us with Daryl, he was in a, in a restaurant down in Hamilton. And uh, so I got, you know, Daryl, one time he scored six goals and four assists in one game, 10 points, probably never get broken. And so I got to meet Daryl. He's not on my Facebook list either. They're not friends. I got to meet them. That's it. Um, but there's another friend that uh, I met 47 years ago. And uh, his name's Rod. Rod Bray is his name. I met him first year of college. And so we're talking 1976, and uh, we were in the same program. We were friends, went through school for three years. The third year of college, we actually rented a house together. Uh, we're going to Fanshawe. There was three of us, Rod and Joe and Ted, the three amigos. And uh, Rod was, you know, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, um, but Rod, he kept inviting me to church, inviting me to church, inviting me to church, inviting me to church. I think after about 12 times, I said yes. <laughs> it was a long time. I was a tough nut to crack. <clears throat> and so I went to church, and a couple weeks later, that was 1979, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And my approach then, and my approach still today, is this is what I, you know, without a, without a religious background or anything, my approach was, if there's a God, I want to know him. Not just up here. I want to know him. And so that's been my quest for 44 years, that I might know him. It's like Paul in Philippians 3.10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. 
Not that I've already attained or am perfected, but I press on that I may hold on to that for which Christ, Jesus Christ also laid hold of me. Brother, I, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of, of God in Christ Jesus. That's still my quest today. I want to know him. I want to know him. And uh, a little later, you know, when, when, when Rod got married, I was one of his groomsmen. Um, a little while later, the, Rod and Connie had a baby, a little girl. And, and so they asked me to be um, her godfather. So you didn't know that I was a godfather. You better, better respect me, capiche? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, no, but we don't even see that much today. But basically what they were saying, if something happens to us, we're entrusting you with our daughter to raise her. Now she's almost 40 and married and got kids, so I think I'm out of that responsibility. Um, when we were down in Florida and I was ordained down in Florida, Rod came down to Florida for my ordination. You know, that was meant a lot to me. You know, um, when we had our 25th anniversary here, four and a half years ago, Rod and Connie came for our anniversary. And we started a relationship with them, and sometimes it's years between seeing them, but every time we get to see them, it's there. That relationship's there. We had, we had dinner with them a couple months ago. We went out to the keg, you know, Sharon and I and Rod and Connie. And that's 47 years. Now, that's a friend. That's a friend. You see, and that's what God wants us to be, is he wants, he's looking for those kind of friends. He wants that friend that's going to stick closer than a brother. And I've had that friend. I've had a couple of those. Closer than a brother. Rod's that friend. Closer than a brother. And, and the, I was thinking about this, and, and the, the Greek word that I think really defines this is the word koinonia, Right? And koinonia talks about communion. It talks about partnership. It talks about fellowship. But it's a deep relationship. And that's what God's called us to. Not just something on the surface, not something just up here, but right here. It's that deep relationship that, that gets God's called us to. And, and it's a lasting relationship as well. In fact, that word koinonia is really almost the same word that said Adam knew Eve and they had a son. That word intercourse is actually has to do this. So it's a really deep relationship that God's called us to. Koinonia. You see this in the Bible. In Job, you know, Job has 10 kids. He has 7,000 sheep and he has all these flocks and everything and you know, servant comes in one day and all this is gone. And another servant comes in while well, the one hasn't finished and all this is gone. And the third one comes in and said, and all your children are dead. And Job is sitting there in the dirt, covered in ashes, grieving for his family. And he has three friends come to him. You know what those friends did? They tore their garments. They covered themselves with ashes, which is what they did to, to tell they were mourning. And they just came and sat with Job in the dirt for seven days and seven nights, and they didn't say, go, say a word. Not a word. Like, what do you tell somebody who just lost ten children? You know? His wife said to, you know, curse God and die. And, and we, we sometimes say, you know, she's a nagging wife, but really not. She just lost ten kids. She was grieving. But the friends, they didn't say a word. Seven days and seven nights, they were just there with him. That's a friend. And that's what God wants. That's what he wants in the body of Christ. But that's what he wants with you and I individually. He wants that individual, personal relationship that gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And I'm still there. I'm still on that path. I'm a work in progress 44 years in. And, and I will be until he takes me home. <clears throat> but there's some prerequisites to be a friend of God.
first one, and then they're all, actually all found in, in, in John 15. The first one is abide in me. It's a deep abiding relationship. In fact, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Abide in me. That's the relationship that God's called us to. That's not going to church, and that's not fellowship, and it's, it's that individual, personal relationship with the Lord himself. Abide in me. The second one is, is, is you're clean because of the word, and, and God's called us to, to, to be a spiritual clean vessel. Even today, when we take communion, we want to keep short accounts. You know, repentance is a lifestyle for a Christian because we mess up all the time. It's, so, so, Lord, I forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Draw me back. Get me back and right. He wants us to be a clean vessel. So if we're going to be a friend with God, it's, it's, it's being clean and, and being available. The third one he wants us to do is he wants us to bear fruit. And that's not a matter of works because we can't do that unless we're abiding in the vine. Right? We can't do that apart from God. But he wants us to bear fruit in whatever it is in our relationships. And, and he wants us to... Our lives mean something. So he wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to keep his commandments. That's in there too. That's the fourth one. Keep my commandments. You know, and that's that's here where we keep the commandments. You know, it's not a head thing. It's here. He says he wants you to be be my disciple. Be a disciplined learner. We're still pursuing God. We're still pursuing his word. We're still growing. This word here, you know, Nathan calls up Friday. It wasn't a big deal. I can, I can share on this one I've been chewing on for about three weeks. You know, this is one that I've been chewing on about being a friend of God. So it was okay. I, it wasn't, didn't catch me off guard. I want to be a friend with God, and I want to share this too, because this is just, it's, it's in my heart. To be a friend of God, right? The next one that he says, he, he, he wants us to love one another even as I've loved you. So loving one another is part of this, that, man, how are they going to know what we're Christians? It's by our love one for another, you see? And the last one, he wants us to be a servant, and more than a servant. Because a servant, he doesn't know what his master does. He just does it. And, and the Bible says the greatest in the kingdom is servant on all. But now the Lord says, I'm going to take you to another level. No longer are you going to be a servant. You're going to be my friend. Because you're going to do, you already know what I want, and you're going to do it. So more than a servant, you're going to be my friend. You didn't know that that's the next step after being a servant. Be a friend of God. And see, in this, those things there, there's seven of them. Those things, none of them are works. They're all about relationship, abiding in the vine. And, and, and as, as we're abiding in the vine, then God moves through us. We're just that vessel that he can work through. And he's looking for those. You know, so I, it, it might sound way out there, but God really wants friends. He really does. He wants us to be his friends. He wants us to pursue him, you know, however long that takes. You know, he, he wants us to, 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 this Christianity is real. It's real for me. It has to affect my relationships, my marriage, my family, my work, every area of my life, my church, my church family. This is the stuff that is where the rubber meets the road. And none of it's works because I can't do anything apart from him. So I I rest in him. I build that relationship. And that's the the thing. So today, and and so this is maybe a short message, but really God just says, you want to be my friend? I'm looking for friends. I'm looking for ones that want that deep, intimate relationship with me. I'm looking for those, you know, just like he, he got to walk with Adam in the cool of the day. God wants to walk with you and me. Man, what a, what a, what a privilege. What an honor. The God's, and he's doing the one all, doing all the seeking. Like, we may think we're seeking the Lord, but he's been doing all the initiating on this relationship. All he wants to us to do is respond. Say yes. <laughs> Say yes to me. Say yes to this relationship. And, and I'm so thankful, you know, that, that I, I, when I, I didn't have all this religious background in me. So when I got saved, it was a clean slate. <laughs> God can do whatever he wants. And so, 
you know, and I'm thankful for that. There's been a lot of training, a lot of Bible, you know, catechism and, and, and just in training. And so we've, we've eaten the word, but I didn't have a lot of that stuff behind me. And, and so I'm not religious. I'm here in my stocking feet. You know, I'd be in my bare feet if it was summer. I'm not trying to look pretty or anything like that. Um, I just want it to be real. I want this walk with God to be real, you know, and I want to be a friend of God. And that's not even really my choice. That's his. That's his choice. And that's his choice for all of us. That's his choice for all of us to be friends of God. And that's my challenge to you today. Do you want to be a friend of God? Man, what, a, what an honor. I'm just, I'm just shaking here, just, just the excitement of knowing that I can be a friend of God. And he has that for all of us. And he's the one that's seeking. And he's saying, will you respond? So as the worship team comes, we're going to sing a song in closing. And it's the blessing we want to bless you with this song. And while we're doing this as well, the altar is open, so if you have need for prayer, God's in the house. God's in the house. And, and we want to see fruit of those prayers. So if you have a need, come. The, we're, we're available. The prayer team's available. But we want to make a difference. This Christianity has to be real right, has to affect every part of our lives and our families. And so this is the, the challenge for you today. God says, will you be my friend? Will you be my friend? I don't want you to be servants any longer. I want you to be my friend. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Father, I didn't seek you. You sought me. Father, you were like the hound of heaven, and you sought me out for 23 years, and I finally said, yes, Lord. And Father, I'm glad you found me. And Lord, I'm still pursuing you, and, and you're still pursuing me. And Lord, I know you, you want each one of us, Father, to, to choose to reach for the prize, the high calling of Christ. Lord, we, we, we want to be your friends. And so, Lord, I just pray that, that, that this word would just sink deep into our hearts, Lord, that, Father, you, we wouldn't be able to get away from it this week. And you'd, you'd be continually drawing us closer and deeper into that walk with you, Lord, because, Father, you're seeking us. You're still seeking every one of us, Father. You're still following and pursuing after us. And so I say, Lord, just may we respond openly and say, yes, Lord, here we are choose me. I want to be your friend. So Father, we just say, Lord, have your way with this word. We give it back to you. Accomplish everything you said, gave it forth to do. And so Lord, we say, Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. The altar is open if you need prayer. Thank you.